Xuanzang, Chinese, Zanzang Pinyin, Xuanzang, Wade Giles, Suan Sang, Ansa, Florida. C. 602–664 was a Chinese Buddhist monk, scholar, traveller, and translator who travelled to India in the 7th century and described the interaction between Chinese Buddhism and Indian Buddhism during the early Tang dynasty. He is also known as Haiyuan Sang in history books of India. During the journey he visited many sacred Buddhist sites in what are now Pakistan, India, Nepal, Bangladesh. He was born in what is now Henan province around 602. From boyhood he took to reading religious books, including the Chinese classics and the writings of ancient sages. While residing in the city of Luoyang in Henan in central China, Xuanzang was ordained as a Shramanera novice monk at the age of 13. Due to the political and social unrest caused by the fall of the Sui dynasty, he went to Chengdu in Sichuan, where he was ordained as a bhikkhu full monk at the age of 20. He later travelled throughout China in search of sacred books of Buddhism. At length, he came to Chang'an, then under the peaceful rule of Emperor Taizong of Tang, where Xuanzang developed the desire to visit India. He knew about Faxian's visit to India and, like him, was concerned about the incomplete and misinterpreted nature of the Buddhist texts that had reached China. He became famous for his 17 year overland journey to India, including Nalanda, which is recorded in detail in the classic Chinese text Great Tang Records on the Western Regions, which in turn provided the inspiration for the novel Journey to the West written by Wu Chengin during the Ming dynasty, around nine centuries after Xuanzang's death. <laughs> Nomenclature, orthography and etymology Less common romanizations of Xuanzang Include Yun Tisan, H. Wen Quan, Huan Tisang, Hai Yuan Sang, Hai Yuan Tisang, Xian Sang, H. Sian Sang, Suan Chawang, Huan Chawang, Suan Tisang, Wen Tisang, Suan Chawang, Huan Quan, Zan Kang, Zan Zang, Xuan Shang, Yuan Chong, Yuan Chawang, and Yuan Chawang. Suan, Huan, Huan and Chuang are also found. The sound written X in Pinyin and HS in Wade Giles, which represents the S or Shish like in today's Mandarin, was previously pronounced as the H like X in early Mandarin, which accounts for the archaic transliterations with H. Another form of his official style was Yuanzang written Yuan Zhang. It is this form that accounts for such variants as Yuan Chong, Yuan Chuang, and Yuan Chuang. Tang Monk Tang Seng, is also transliterated, Thang Seng, another of Xuanzang's standard aliases is Sanzang Fashi simplified Chinese, Sankang Fashi traditional Chinese, Sankang Fashi pinyin, Sanzang Fashi, literally, Sanzang Dharma or law teacher, Fa being a Chinese translation for Sanskrit, Dharma or Pali, Pakrit Dhamma, the implied meaning being, Buddhism. Sanzang is the Chinese term for the Buddhist canon, or Tripitaka, and in some English language fiction and English translations of Journey to the West, Xuanzang is addressed as Tripitaka. Early life 
Xuanzang was born Chen Wei or Chen Yi around 602 in Chenhe village, Gushi Town, Chinese, Goshi Jen Luzhou, near present-day Luoyang, Henan, and died on the 5th of February 664 in Yuha Palace, Yuwagong in present-day Tongchuan, Shaanxi. His family was noted for its erudition for generations, and Xuanzang was the youngest of four children. His ancestor was Chen Shi, Shen Shi 104-186, a minister of the Eastern Han dynasty. His great-grandfather Chen Qin Shen Qin served as the prefect of Shangdang, Shangdang present-day Changzi, Shangxi, during the Eastern Wei. His grandfather Chen Kong, Shen Kong was a professor in the Taishui Imperial Academy during the Northern Qi. His father Chen Wei, Shen Wei was a conservative Confucian who served as the magistrate of Zhongling County during the Sui dynasty, but later gave up office and withdrew into seclusion to escape the political turmoil that gripped China towards the end of the Sui. According to traditional biographies, Xuanzang displayed a superb intelligence and earnestness, amazing his father by his careful observance of the Confucian rituals at the age of eight. Along with his brothers and sister, he received an early education from his father, who instructed him in classical works on filial piety and several other canonical treatises of Orthodox Confucianism. Although his household was essentially Confucian, at a young age, Xuanzang expressed interest in becoming a Buddhist monk like one of his elder brothers. After the death of his father in 611, he lived with his older brother Shane Su, Chinese, Shane Su later known as Zhang Jie Chinese, Zhang Jie for five years at Jingtu Monastery, Chinese, Jingtu Si in Luoyang, supported by the Sui state. During this time he studied Mahayana as well as various early Buddhist schools, preferring the former. In 618, the Sui dynasty collapsed and Xuanzang and his brother fled to Chang'an, which had been proclaimed as the capital of the Tang dynasty, and then southward to Chengdu, Sichuan. Here the two brothers spent two or three years in further study in the monastery of Kong Wei, including the Abhidharma Kosa Sastra. When Xuanzang requested to take Buddhist orders at the age of 13, the abbot Zheng Shangguo made an exception in his case because of his precocious knowledge. Xuanzang was fully ordained as a monk in 622, at the age of 20. The myriad contradictions and discrepancies in the texts at that time prompted Xuanzang to decide to go to India and study in the cradle of Buddhism. He subsequently left his brother and returned to Chang'an to study foreign languages and to continue his study of Buddhism. He began his mastery of Sanskrit in 626, and probably also studied Tocharian. During this time, Xuanzang also became interested in the metaphysical Yogacara school of Buddhism. Pilgrimage <inaudible> 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 In 627, Xuanzang reportedly had a dream that convinced him to journey to India. Tang China and the Gokturks were at war at the time and Emperor Taizong of Tang had prohibited foreign travel. Xuanzang persuaded some Buddhist guards at Yumun Pass and slipped out of the empire through Liangzhou Gansu, and Qinghai in 629. He subsequently travelled across the Gobi Desert to Kumul modern Hami city, thence following the Tian Shan westward. He arrived in Turpin in 630. 
Here he met the King of Turpin, a Buddhist who equipped him further for his travels with letters of introduction and valuables to serve as funds. The hottest mountain in China, the Flaming Mountains, is located in Turpin and was depicted in the journey to the west. Moving further westward, Xuanzang escaped robbers to reach Karasar, then toward the non Mahayana monasteries of Kucha. Further west, he passed Aksu before turning northwest to cross the Tian Shan's Bidel Pass into modern Kyrgyzstan. He skirted Isak Kul before visiting Tokmak on its northwest, and met the great Khagan of the Gokturks, whose relationship to the Tang Emperor was friendly at the time. After a feast, Xuanzang continued west then southwest to Tashkent, capital of modern Uzbekistan. From here, he crossed the desert further west to Samarkand. In Samarkand, which was under Persian influence, the party came across some abandoned Buddhist temples and Xuanzang impressed the local king with his preaching. Setting out again to the south, Xuanzang crossed a spur of the Pamirs and passed through the famous Iron Gates. Continuing southward, he reached the Amu Darya and Termez, where he encountered a community of more than a thousand Buddhist monks. Further east he passed through Kunduz, where he stayed for some time to witness the funeral rites of Prince Tardu, who had been poisoned. Here he met the monk Dharmasimha, and on the advice of the late Tardu made the trip westward to Balkh modern Afghanistan, to see the Buddhist sites and relics, especially the Nava Vihara, which he described as the westernmost Vihara in the world. Here Xuanzang also found over 3,000 non-Mahayana monks, including Prajnakara Ban Ruo Jie Luo or Wei Xing, a monk with whom Xuanzang studied early Buddhist scriptures. He acquired the important text of the Mahavabhasa Chinese, Da Pai Po Sha Lun here, which he later translated into Chinese. Prajñakara then accompanied the party southward to Bamyan, where Xuanzang met the king and saw tens of non-Mahayana monasteries, in addition to the two large Buddhas of Bamyan carved out of the rock face. The party then resumed their travel eastward, crossing the Shabar Pass and descending to the regional capital of Kapisi, about 60 kilometers (37 miles) north of modern Kabul, which sported over 100 monasteries and 6,000 monks, mostly Mahayana. This was part of the fabled old land of Gandhara. Xuanzang took part in a religious debate here, and demonstrated his knowledge of many Buddhist schools. Here he also met the first Jains and Hindu of his journey. He pushed and to Adinapur later named Jalalabad and Lagman, where he considered himself to have reached India. The year was 630. Topic. Arrival in India Xuanzang left Adinapur, which had few Buddhist monks, but many stupas and monasteries. His travels included, passing through Hunza and the Khyber Pass to the east, reaching the former capital of Gandhara, Purushapura Peshawar, on the other side. Peshawar was nothing compared to its former glory, and Buddhism was declining in the region. Xuanzang visited a number of stupas around Peshawar, notably the Kanishka stupa. This stupa was built just southeast of Peshawar, by a former king of the city. In 1908, it was rediscovered by D.B. Spooner with the help of Xuanzang's account. Xuanzang left Peshawar and travelled northeast to the Swat Valley. 
Reaching Adiana, he found 1,400-year-old monasteries, that had previously supported 18,000 monks. The remnant monks were of the Mahayana school. Xuanzang continued northward and into the Bunner Valley, before doubling back via Shabazz Gari to cross the Indus River at Hund. He visited Taxila which was desolate and half-ruined, and found most of its Sangaramas still ruined and desolate with the state having become a dependency of Kashmir with the local leaders fighting amongst themselves for power. Only a few monks remained there. He noted that it had some time previously been a subject of Kapisa. He went to Kashmir in 631 where he met a talented monk Samgayasas, Sengja Yeshi and studied there. In Kashmir, he found himself in another center of Buddhist culture and describes that there were over 100 monasteries and over 5,000 monks in the area. Between 632 and early 633, he studied with various monks, including 14 months with Vanitaprabha Pai Ni Duo Bo La Po or Diao Fu Guang, 4 months with Kandravarman Zanda Luo Fa Mo or Yu Wei, and a winter and half a spring with Jayagupta. Du Ye Jude. During this time, Xuanzang wrote about the Fourth Buddhist Council that took place nearby, ca. 100 AD, under the order of King Kanishka of Kushana. He visited Chiniot and Lahore as well and provided the earliest writings available on the ancient cities. In 634, Xuanzang arrived in Matipura, Modibu Luo known as Mandawar today. In 634, he went east to Jalandhar in eastern Punjab, before climbing up to visit predominantly non-Mahayana monasteries in the Kulu Valley and turning southward again to Bairat and then Mathura, on the Yamuna River. Mathura had 2,000 monks of both major Buddhist branches, despite being Hindu-dominated. Xuanzang travelled up the river to Shruna, also mentioned in the works of Yudhyotakara, before crossing eastward to Matipura, where he arrived in 635, having crossed the river Ganges. At Matipura Monastery, Xuanzang studied under Maitrasena. From here, he headed south to Sankasya Kapitha, then onward to Kanauj, the grand capital of the Empire of Harsha under the northern Indian Emperor Harsha. It is believed he also visited Govashan present-day Kashapur in the Harsha era. In 636, Xuanzang encountered 100 monasteries of 10,000 monks, both Mahayana and non-Mahayana, and was impressed by the king's patronage of both scholarship and Buddhism. Xuanzang spent time in the city studying early Buddhist scriptures, before setting off eastward again for Ayodhya Sakita, homeland of the Yogacara school. Xuanzang now moved south to Kasambi Kosam, where he had a copy made from an important local image of the Buddha. Xuanzang now returned northward to Srivasti Bharach, travelled through Terai in the southern part of modern Nepal here he found deserted Buddhist monasteries and thence to Kapalavasta, his last stop before Lumbini, the birthplace of Buddha. In 637, Xuanzang set out from Lumbini to Kasinagara, the site of Buddha's death, before heading southwest to the Deer Park at Sarnath where Buddha gave his first sermon, and where Xuanzang found 1,500 resident monks. Traveling eastward, at first via Varanasi, Xuanzang reached Vaisali, Pataliputra, Patna, and Bodh Gaya. 
He was then accompanied by local monks to Nalanda, the greatest Indian university of Indian state of Bihar, where he spent at least the next two years. He visited Champa Monastery, Bagalpur. He was in the company of several thousand scholar monks, whom he praised. Xuanzang studied logic, grammar, Sanskrit, and the Yogacara school of Buddhism during his time at Nalanda. René Grousset notes that it was at Nalanda where an azure pool winds around the monasteries, adorned with the full-blown cups of the blue lotus, the dazzling red flowers of the lovely kanaka hang here and there, and outside groves of mango trees offer the inhabitants their dense and protective shade. That Xuanzang met the venerable Silabhadra, the monastery's superior. Silabhadra had dreamt of Xuanzang's arrival and that it would help spread far and wide the holy law. Grousset writes, The Chinese pilgrim had finally found the omniscient master, the incomparable metaphysician who was to make known to him the ultimate secrets of the idealist systems. The founders of Mahayana idealism, Asanga and Vasubandhu, trained Dignaga, he trained Dharmapala, and Dharmapala had in turn trained Silabhadra. Silabhadra was thus in a position to make available to the Sino-Japanese world the entire heritage of Buddhist idealism, and the Sidi Xuanzang's great philosophical treatise is none other than the Summa of this doctrine, the fruit of seven centuries of Indian Buddhist thought. From Nalanda, Xuanzang travelled through several kingdoms, including Pundranagara, to the capital of Pundravardhana, identified with modern Mahasana. Thangar, in present-day Bangladesh. There Xuanzang found 20 monasteries with over 3,000 monks studying both the Hinayana and the Mahayana. One of them was the Vasiba Monastery po -shi po, where he found over 700 Mahayana monks from all over East India. He also visited Somapura Mahavihara at Paharpur in the district of Nalgon, in modern-day Bangladesh. Xuanzang turned southward and travelled to Andradesa to visit the Viharas at Amravati and Nagarjunakanda. He stayed at Amravati and studied Abhidhamapitakam. He observed that there were many Viharas at Amravati and some of them were deserted. He later proceeded to Kanshi, the imperial capital of Pallavas and a strong centre of Buddhism. He continued travelling to Nasik, Ajanta, Malwa, from there he went to Multan and Pravada before returning to Nalanda again. At the invitation of Hindu king Kumar Bhaskar Varman, he went east to the ancient city of Pragjyotishpura in the kingdom of Kamarupa after crossing the Karatoya and spent three months in the region. Before going to Kamarupa he visited Silhet what is now a modern city of Bangladesh. He gives detailed account about culture and people of Silhet. Later, the king escorted Xuanzang back to the Kanauj at the request of King Harshavardhana, who was an ally of Kumar Bhaskar Varman, to attend a great Buddhist assembly there which was attended by both of the kings as well as several other kings from neighbouring kingdoms, Buddhist monks, Brahmins and Jains. King Harsha invited Xuanzang to Kumbh Mela in Prayag where he witnessed King Harsha's generous distribution of gifts to the poor. After visiting Prayag he returned to Kanauj where he was given a grand farewell by King Harsha. Travelling through the Khyber Pass of the Hindu Kush, Xuanzang passed through Kashgar, Khotan, and Dunhuang on his way back to China. He arrived in the capital, Chang'an, on the seventh day of the first month of 645, 16 years after he left Chinese territory, and a great procession celebrated his return. Topic. 
Topic: Return to China. On his return to China in AD 645, Xuanzang was greeted with much honor but he refused all high civil appointments offered by the still reigning emperor, Emperor Taizong of Tang. Instead, he retired to a monastery and devoted his energy in translating Buddhist texts until his death in AD 664. According to his biography, he returned with over 600 Mahayana and Hinayana texts, seven statues of the Buddha and more than a hundred Sarira relics. In celebration of Xuanzang's extraordinary achievement in translating the Buddhist texts, Emperor Gaozong of Tang ordered renowned Tang calligrapher Chu Suliang Chu Suiliang and inscriber Wan Wenshao, Wan Wenshao to install two steel stones, collectively known as the Emperor's Preface to the Sacred Teachings, Yanta Sheng Zhao Shu at the Giant Wild Goose Pagoda. Topic: Chinese Buddhism influence. During Xuanzang's travels, he studied with many famous Buddhist masters, especially at the famous center of Buddhist learning at Nalanda. When he returned, he brought with him some 657 Sanskrit texts. With the emperor's support, he set up a large translation bureau in Chang'an, present-day Xi'an, drawing students and collaborators from all over East Asia. He is credited with the translation of some 1,330 fascicles of scriptures into Chinese. His strongest personal interest in Buddhism was in the field of Yogacara, Yu Jia Xing Pai or Consciousness Only. Why? The force of his own study, translation and commentary of the texts of these traditions initiated the development of the Faxiang school in East Asia. Although the school itself did not thrive for a long time, its theories regarding perception, consciousness, karma, rebirth, etc. found their way into the doctrines of other more successful schools. Xuanzang's closest and most eminent student was Kuiji, Kuiji who became recognized as the first patriarch of the Faxiang school. Xuanzang's logic, as described by Kuiji, was often misunderstood by scholars of Chinese Buddhism because they lack the necessary background in Indian logic. Another important disciple was the Korean monk Wanchuk. Xuanzang was known for his extensive but careful translations of Indian Buddhist texts to Chinese, which have enabled subsequent recoveries of lost Indian Buddhist texts from the translated Chinese copies. He is credited with writing or compiling the Cheng Waishi Lun as a commentary on these texts. His translation of the Heart Sutra became and remains the standard in all East Asian Buddhist sects, as well, this translation of the Heart Sutra was generally admired within the traditional Chinese gentry and is still widely respected as numerous renowned past and present Chinese calligraphers have penned its texts as their artworks. He also founded the short-lived but influential Faxiang school of Buddhism. Additionally, he was known for recording the events of the reign of the northern Indian emperor, Harsha. The Perfection of Wisdom Sutra Xuanzang returned to China with three copies of the Mahaprajnaparamita Sutra. Xuanzang, with a team of disciple translators, commenced translating the voluminous work in 660 CE, using all three versions to ensure the integrity of the source documentation. 
Xuanzang was being encouraged by a number of his disciple translators to render an abridged version. After a suite of dreams quickened his decision, Xuanzang determined to render an unabridged, complete volume, faithful to the original of 600 chapters. Topic. Autobiography and biography In 646, under the emperor's request, Xuanzang completed his book Great Tang Records on the Western Regions, Da Tang Shi Yu Ji which has become one of the primary sources for the study of medieval Central Asia and India. This book was first translated into French by the sinologist Stanislas Julian in 1857. There was also a biography of Xuanzang written by the monk Huili. Both books were first translated into English by Samuel Beale, in 1884 and 1911 respectively. An English translation with copious notes by Thomas Waters was edited by T. W. Rhys Davids and S. W. Bushell, and published posthumously in London in 1905. <laughs> Legacy Xuanzang's work, The Great Tang Records on the Western Regions, is the longest and most detailed account of the countries of Central and South Asia that has been bestowed upon posterity by a Chinese Buddhist pilgrim. While his main purpose was to obtain Buddhist books and to receive instruction on Buddhism while in India, he ended up doing much more. He has preserved the records of political and social aspects of the lands he visited. His record of the places visited by him in Bengal mainly Raktamritika near Karnasavarna, Pundranagara and its environs, Samatada, Tamralipti, and Harakala have been very helpful in the recording of the archaeological history of Bengal, what is now. His account has also shed welcome light on the history of 7th century Bengal, especially the Gauta kingdom under Shashanka, although at times he can be quite partisan. Xuanzang obtained and translated 657 Sanskrit Buddhist works. He received the best education on Buddhism he could find throughout India. Much of this activity is detailed in the companion volume to Xiyug, the biography of Xuanzang written by Huili, entitled The Life of Xuanzang. His version of the Heart Sutra is the basis for all Chinese commentaries on the sutra, and recitations throughout China, Korea and Japan. His style was, by Chinese standards, cumbersome and overly literal, and marked by scholarly innovations in terminology, usually, where another version by the earlier translator Kumarajiva exists, Kumarajivas is more popular. In fiction Xuanzang's journey along the Silk Road, and the legends that grew up around it, inspired the Ming novel Journey to the West, one of the great classics of Chinese literature. The fictional counterpart Tang Sanzang is the reincarnation of the Golden Cicada, a disciple of Gautama Buddha, and is protected on his journey by three powerful disciples. One of them, the monkey, was a popular favorite and profoundly influenced Chinese culture and contemporary Japanese manga and anime including the popular Dragon Ball and Sayuki series, and became well known in the West by Arthur Whaley's translation and later the cult TV series Monkey. 
In the Yuan dynasty, there was also a play by Wu Changeling Wu Chongling about Xuanzang obtaining scriptures. Topic: <inaudible> Relics. <inaudible> <inaudible> A skull relic purported to be that of Xuanzang was held in the Temple of Great Compassion, Tianjin until 1956 when it was taken to Nalanda, allegedly by the Dalai Lama, and presented to India. The relic was in the Patna Museum for a long time but was moved to a newly built memorial hall in Nalanda in 2007. The Wenshu Monastery in Chengdu, Sichuan Province also claims to have part of Xuanzang's skull. Part of Xuanzang's remains were taken from Nanjing by soldiers of the Imperial Japanese Army in 1942, and are now enshrined at Yakushi-ji in Nara, Japan. Works Topic See also Equals equals notes <laughs>